Welcome back to another episode of Your Hope-Filled Perspective, where it's always our goal to restore hope, renew minds, and empower listeners to live in their God-given identity. I'm excited for you to be with us here today because I have a friend who's going to be sharing some significant tips. I've been following her ministry for decades, and the wisdom she imparts is so helpful. Today, we're going to be talking about how to get organized and stay that way. Scripture tells us in Proverbs 13, 4, the sluggish crave and have nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. And you'll see why we chose that scripture for today as you follow along in this conversation. Today, I'm going to be talking with my guest, Marsha Ramsland, who's also known as the leading online organizing coach and a business productivity expert. She is the author of the book, Simplify Your Life, Get Organized and Stay That Way book series, which has sold over 100,000 copies. She's a nationally recognized media guest appearing in Women's Day and Real Simple Magazines, The Wall Street Journal, Martha Stewart Radio, and Marsha believes anyone can become more organized, even you, with the motivation momentum and mastery which she provides in her online courses and fast track coaching and consulting welcome to the program marcia well i'm so excited to be here i think my mother would be the most surprised to hear that introduction you know <laughs> up, we all had messy rooms and she never probably examined or expected that i would be an organizing pro almost 36 years now so it's been my career and it's a great joy to help people move ahead in life because organizing is just a tool it's not the goal it's a tool to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. i'm so glad you shared that about your mother because what i have found is so often our passion or our ministry comes out of our own hurts or trials or experiences. So I think my audience would be curious to hear, where did your passion for becoming the organizing pro come from? Well, I remember the day exactly. I was in my kitchen and I, my husband was gonna show up in 10 minutes from work and my six-year-old was slowly emptying the dishwasher to help me and I was just driving nuts. And then the four-year-old daughter was coloring off the countertop onto white countertops. I'm like, no, another mess. And my six-month-old son was uh, crawling at my feet. And I thought, when will he sleep through the night? And I looked around at laundry piles and mail piles and dishes. And I, I stirred the spaghetti noodles faster, as if that was really going to help. And all of a sudden, out of my mouth exploded, someone's got to get organized. And my three little kids froze and looked at me. And I said, by the ages of everyone in this room, I guess that would be me. And so at that point, I thought, just like you do in a crisis, it's like, I have got to change. I am not going to keep living this way. My life is worth more than this. Not worth more than the kids, but worth more than feeling frustrated. So I started to read everything written on organized back in like 1985, and it was written by left brain men who said, all you have to do is make a list, start with the top item and check it off. Just stay with the list. And as I started organizing myself, I thought, oh, we women, we can't even find the list in an hour, let alone keep on track because our lives are so complicated. And I found, I find that men also have complicated lives now. So as I got systems, I started to get so excited about it. You know, uh, Michelle, it used to take me from six o'clock at night to 10 o'clock at night to finish the dishes. I mean, four hours to do dishes. But then I thought, well, if I do this, it's going to go faster. If I uh, gather everything on one side of the sink, if I do this, if I do this, I got it down to a half an hour. And now I'm down to about eight minutes. So it can keep improving. I was so excited. Then I thought, oh, What's next? Okay, my laundry system. Oh yeah, we don't have to do laundry every day. Pick days of the week. I got that done, the kitchen, the laundry, and then the cleanup and the clutter, then the paper. And I was so excited. I ended up teaching at a VBS class, which is Vacation Bible School for the moms. And for five days, I thought, oh, this is great. I'll do Proverbs 31 in her time management. And then as the first night, I'm like, 
there's not five hours of time management in here. I have to give more tips. And so as I gave tips, they went, oh, oh that's great. And then the next day, more tips. And uh, it just continued and people said, well, could you come to my house and organize? Okay. And could you go to my husband's work and organize? And it just exploded. So I was doing 50% speaking and 50% clients. And I have done this from New York to when we moved to Dallas, when we moved to California, all over the place. And I am thankful that not only have I learned the systems, but I have found that people are really smart. And once they learn the systems, they take off. And it's just a really a great skill that we're not born with. And people say to me, aren't you worried that you understand us? And I said, I do understand, but I have the gift of strategy and focus, and I can give it to you. And so that way, even though they may not be born with it, I can teach it. I'm very excited to do that. Wow, absolutely. Now talk for a little bit about the two kinds of lifestyles mentioned in Proverbs. Yes. Um, I was reading in my Bible, and these two things kept uh, cropping up, the words diligent and sluggish or sluggard. And I thought, uh, we don't want to be the one. And we all want to be the other because we don't want to be listed as sluggish. And I actually took the time to write it out. And there were 23 verses that contrasted the two. And I thought, hmm, these don't have anything to do with your spirituality. It has everything to do with your lifestyle. And I thought if God wrote 23 verses about it, it must be very important to him how we live our lives. So the diligent, for example, they finish things and the sluggish, they actually have the same goals, but they don't work towards it. So, you know, we're kind of fast track people. We want to get there right away. But if there's a project that takes step after step after step and you're focused on your goal, you'll get there. But if you go, oh, this is too hard. I am not going to go through this desktop today with all these papers you won't get it done. So that's how I applied those. And I found that believers could be uh, who have a faith could be living a sluggish lifestyle. And people who are diligent and don't have any faith could be living a diligent lifestyle. But they always feel something's missing inside. So I like to bring both levels of people up. And they go, wow, you mean I can pray about this paper pile that God will help me make decisions? and what to keep in my closet and what to donate like yep he cares about it and you will have that that inkling inside yeah i should do this or i shouldn't do that and you move forward so it's pretty fun those 23 verses many of us have read about the proverbs 31 woman and if i'm being honest i have a tendency to cringe because I feel like I can't measure up to her. So what insights can you share about the Proverbs 31 woman's time management skills? Excellent question. And I would say she didn't do it all in one day. Oh, and hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? So as I studied it, the first uh, about four or five verses give the overall lifestyle and characteristics. And actually Proverbs uh, 31 is 23 verses that are like the acrostic of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's the same. Uh, so every verse begins with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That's why they feel kind of a little disjointed. Mm -hmm. um, so in English, it might be uh, for a man to choose a woman. This is because a mother wrote it for her son. Um, she always does my laundry. You're like, oh, great. And then B, she believes everything I do is right. And you're like, oh my goodness. And um, so that's the acrostic in the alphabet. But um, it's also a verse, a chapter of, of a contrast. The first line is contrasting the second. And believe it or not, it talks about three stages of her lifestyle. So in the first part, there's about 10 verses on the early adult years. That's when she's getting food for her servant girls. That's when... Her lamp does not go out night. And then in the middle adult years, that's when she sees her business is uh, profitable. Her trading is profitable. She's making those sashes, which is a principle. We don't have to get out a sewing machine, thank goodness. 
And then the third part is her adult years, where um, her children arise and call her blessed. Well, if you have preschoolers, they are not going to do that. But as Some adults, teenagers won't either. <laughs> no. So um, in the later adult years, that's when that does happen. So when you look at it that way, and then you, I also map it out, and I have this study available at organizingpro.com. So people can look at it and go, what did she do daily that's similar to what I do? Mm -hmm. Well, she cooked, she cared for her family, and she had some kind of work to do. And then I also have a section on, did she have any friends? <laughs> because she worked so hard. And uh, yes, her friends were those she reached out to. They were people she worked with, her family. And then um, what special skills? I love this part because she had decorating skills. Isn't that fun, Michelle? And she had also, she was physically fit. Well, she must have been because she was so busy with those yeah. fields, raising them and earning a profit. So I break it down that way in several ways. Her time, uh, her daily goals, her long range goals, quote, mid range goals, just like we would in time management, but also relationships, people, and what her characteristics were. So um, people enjoy that study and the women come away going, oh, I'm so happy. I don't have to do that all in one day, but it is a life goal and a lifestyle that we can emulate, which is really important. The important thing is every time I read it, you kind of feel that nudge on a different verse. And that's the verse you want to write out, put on your bathroom mirror and just let that simmer and sink in and say, as she sees her trading is profitable, her lamp does not go out at night. Oh, I guess I need to be more diligent in my home-based business, my work, and uh, whatever it is that God speaks through that verse, you write it out and you will incorporate it. And it's a great way to grow. I love it. I love it. An awesome way to grow. But what a relief to know, Marcia, that she didn't do it all in one day because I think most of us when we read that we think look she started at 3 a.m and she ended at 1 a.m and it's exhausting but I like how you've broken it down both in terms of what she did as well as at the different stages in her life because our focuses do change they do. I've got a kiddo going off to college all of a sudden my my lifestyle is going to change a little bit I'm not going to be um tending to as many of the meals and laundry and that kind of thing. Friends, we're going to take a real short commercial break, but I want you to stick with us because when you come back, we're going to be talking more about how to get organized and stay that way. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your hope-filled perspective where today we are talking with my friend, Marsha Ramslin, who is otherwise known as the Organizing Pro. She's got uh, several books that you're going to want to pick up. Simplify Your Life series, Get Organized and Stay That Way, as well as a companion workbook and Bible study. We're going to have Marsha back on the show to help us figure out how to simplify our holidays. But we will put all of Marsha's resources as well as her upcoming course, Fresh Start to a New Organized You. We will put all that information in our show notes that you can find at drmichelleb.com. Marsha, let's, let's step back and get to the basics here. What's the purpose of getting organized and what can it do for someone? Ah, excellent question. You always have to think of the purpose as a twofold. One, it improves your outlook on life, your self-esteem. And secondly, it's also so that you can use your gifts and your talents more. So getting organized is the tool to get you there. Um, it's amazing how many women come to me and say, I don't have time to get organized. And it's not something that takes time. It's something that you do as you're going along. So if you find that, uh, let's say you can't find anything to wear in your closet in the morning, that's where you start each day. It's time to go through it and say, all right, let's put all the blouses together from light to dark in the short sleeve and then the long sleeve. And then when you find out you have eight black tops, you go, hmm, that's not really my color anymore. I wonder why I have this many. Because when you sort them like that, then you can see 
where there's an excess and you can have a donation bag right in your closet, fold it, drop it in there. Tomorrow it's going to be easier to get dressed and usually we dress by color by the way. And uh, so I see your pretty color on and I'm in my other favorite color. And um, so you want to think about how many shoes do I have and line them up from uh, dressy to casual. I had one lady line them up and she had 40 pair of shoes. I have 18 pair of shoes. Someone else had 75 and say, really, how many am I wearing? Uh -huh. And it goes back to, I can't find anything to wear in my closet. It's because you haven't weeded out the less important to focus on the important. Mm -hmm. We like to apply the 80-20% Pareto's rule that you are wearing 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. And it would be wonderful if you could donate the excess. You would get dressed faster. You would help other people. And it's a win-win all the way around. And I love people to organize their closet because they wake up happier when they have something to wear. Do you think that part of that walking into the closet and feeling like I have nothing to wear is because they're overwhelmed because they have too many choices? Ah, very good point. I think also we hang on to things that aren't quite right, but it's a special day and you feel like, well, I can't really wear that. So I wear it on Saturday or something like that. And you just have to go through and let it go. In my closet organizing, uh, like a pro course, I teach women to have a top five collection. And so for each season, you have five grab and go outfits that, you know, you wake up late, you can grab it, you know it's good head to toe, and you run out the door in 10 minutes. So uh, each season we do that, I have them get their phone, put it by their hip, look in a full length mirror and take a picture. And you just feel better and everything goes better. Now, how do you get organized? Start where it really counts. Mm. Your closet is one. Secondly, your kitchen is the other one because there's nothing more depressing than coming into a kitchen that looks like it was right after Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> it's just a mess. So if you do my two minute pickup every time you leave the kitchen and say, timer, turn it on, what can I put away? So when I come back, it'll be in order. People love that and they say, oh, I can come back and I can think about what's the next meal instead of, oh, I gotta clean this up. Mm -hmm. So uh, closet is first, second is the kitchen. Third probably is your bathroom because that's a lot of clutter. It just kind of sits there and it's, it have a beautiful spa like, um, bathroom that the counter is clean. You just take a towel and wipe it off, hang it up and you are done and good to go. So um, then we go into projects. So then you say that was daily routine and then you go into projects. But let me talk about the kitchen clutter. There are two kinds of clutter I've named and the, the things in the dish drainer and on the counter, that's your daily clutter. If you don't deal with that every day and by seven o'clock it's not all put away, then you have accumulated clutter and that's beyond the dish drainer and all over the counters in the island. And when you have accumulated clutter, that takes longer to clean up. So do your daily clutter, uh, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, and then you can move on to projects, which might be on the weekend or it could be Thursday night. And then you can go, all right, I'm going to go through all those shoes. How many do I have compared to other people? By the way, the average in America is 13 pair of shoes. Wow. And the average in the world is one pair. So if you have exceeded that number, look at what you're using and pass it on. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what do you think about that before I go into the next levels of project organizing? I think you break it down in such a manageable way that anybody can spend the two minutes cleaning up that daily clutter in the kitchen, but it makes such a difference because if you spend the two minutes today and the two minutes tomorrow and the two minutes the next day, you don't end up having to spend half a day. Exactly, exactly. Um, I also have a five file folder system of five file folders that get you through the mail so you don't have, quote, the pile. And the pile of mail and papers 
So the average person gets 15 pieces of mail a day. Five of them are junk mail. Get off those lists. The other five um, are like you can deal with it right away, but then there's the pile. Five more a day and uh, every day, that's like 1,500 pieces of mail at the end of the year. And that is just speaking to you, saying, you're guilty, you're so far behind. <laughs> but instead, um, with those five file folders, you want one for to decide. That takes care of everything that you can take off your refrigerator. And then uh, secondly, to do. And you write it on a pad of paper that sits on your counter. So don't put anything in to do unless it's written on a, a master list or in a planner and do it on the three days you can most control, today, tomorrow, and the next day. Beyond that, life is changing. And then another one is information. So you get a soccer schedule, you get a polling place, political information. Another one will be my interests. And you put your name on it and you go, it doesn't have to relate to anything. It can be decorating, it can be LA Fitness, it can be whatever I want to put it in there. So that way, and the last one, to pay, uh, T-O-P-A-Y. You don't put bills in there because that would be, I paid this, or is this to pay? Bills you've paid, they go in another place in the house, usually in a file, probably a desk uh, in a home office or a guest room. But to pay is what comes in the mail and you haven't put it, um, you haven't paid it yet. Everybody is paying online, but once in a while, there's those bills that you have to do, put them in there. So I think it it is life changing. As you say, the, the book and the workbook, we have, I taught it on national radio and we had 60 groups start in 22 states. A thousand women have been through the course and they're like, I never knew this. This is so great. So I will be teaching that in September this year. It's online and people can join us. The neat thing, Michelle, is that each one have to put a picture of what the topic of the week. So they have to put in four to six pictures of their kitchen. Um, they have to open cabinets, have to open the refrigerator, have to open drawers, junk drawers, and the pantry. And then I coach each person I give each person 90 seconds. I give them three things to do or maybe five. I talk, you know, I've done this before. And then they do it that week. They come back and they're like, oh, this worked. And they show the after picture. And we go through their house, we go through their paperwork, and we go through their time. So um, I, for about three decades, I would go in person. But for the last six years, I've learned to do it virtually. And I can cover anyone in the world and we organize people faster that way and the neat thing is they stay that way because it's their place it's their space but my organizing eyes show them how they could do it differently so it's a lot of fun what do so you think is hold, that, mm -hmm. what do you think is holding people back from living the organized lifestyle because so many people want to live that way so what's holding them back? Um, this is where you deal with it. And I would say three things. But the first thing is mindset. And that is, um, I've always been this way. I'm used to it. I'm tired. That's the big one. I'm tired. I can't tackle that. Because people think it'll take an hour. It doesn't take an hour. It's two minutes. So mindset is an important one. Usually I can get at the bottom of that one right away. The second one is, I don't really know what to do. We've always put our coats here. We've always put the mail here. I don't know what to do. And the third is just not being trained how to do it differently. So I I've just did a professor um, who had all her papers all over the dining room table. And she really didn't know how to do filing. And you think, well, doesn't everyone know what manila folders are? No. No, and uh, even if they did, they wouldn't want to do it. But the way I teach it, I get to help them in a fun way. And they're like, ah, I have my dining room table back. This lady said, my teenager and junior high sons were saying, why are we eating at this table <laughs> in front of the TV? <laughs> 
So it's kind of fun to um, see the life changes that happen. Will you speak just a minute to how we overcome the emotional attachment to items? We just downsized majorly from a house in Texas to a house in South Carolina. So we were forced to deal with some of that. But I know for many people, that emotional attachment keeps them in the analysis paralysis realm because they're, they're afraid of letting go of things. So will you talk to that as, as an organizing pro? How do we get beyond that? You take your phone and you take pictures. Um, it is, uh, and I hope that you did this before you move, go through each room and take a picture of each wall of each room and then the whole room. And then you have that memory of how it was. Um, it's also nice to do that for if you have a china cabinet, because when you get to the new place, it's like, how did all this fit in here? <laughs> so you kind of go through your pictures and do that. But um, the attachments are a big thing. So I usually, and that's why I laid out the course, we start in the kitchen because you don't need a fondue pot or crock pot, and that's easier to get rid of than 15 inches of paper. Um, the clothes, that is good to bring a girlfriend and say that dresses like you, but a little bit better and hold something up and you kind of look past the item at their eye and they're going, eh, and they're just trying to tell you I don't think that's your style anymore. So sometimes we need that external help of taking pictures of the item. Mm -hmm. Secondly, of having a teenager look at it or um, a girlfriend look at it and say, oh, I think you could pass that on. And then thirdly, if you have a whole bunch of things, put them on a white tablecloth on a table spread them out. They're all family memories. Take a picture and then you are keeping the memory, but you can pass it on. I have this one saying that I heard that makes so much sense. Um, the problem with poverty in the world is not God's provision. It's our distribution. And when you, isn't that powerful? It the is. Say poverty. that one more time. The problem with poverty in the world is not God's provision it's our distribution. And when you look at what you are holding on to and you start to think, do I really need this camping um, cook stove? Do I need the tent? We haven't camped for 15 years, you know, pass it on and let somebody else use it. Do we really need this extra refrigerator? It's working, but we could pass it on and I'm sure there's someone that could use it. So, um, it's important to know you're going to have to let go sometime. And, and now is it better time than to leave it for other people? That is a big weight. Uh, kids have it passed down from their parents, their grandparents. And you probably have already learned with your college kids, they don't want the oak and mahogany furniture. They're all over Ikea. And right. so start and let it go while somebody could still use it. Such good advice. Friends, we're going to take a real short commercial break, but when we come back, I'm going to ask Marcia to share with you more about how to get organized and stay that way, as well as her hope-filled perspective. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your hope-filled perspective, where today we have been talking with organizing pro Marsha Ramsland, and I really hope that you will go to the show notes at drmichelleb.com and look at all of her resources, as well as her courses that are coming up and her coaching. If you are struggling with getting organized and staying that way, she's the one that you want to be in touch with. Marsha, we before the break, we were talking a little bit about that analysis paralysis. And so often that interferes with our motivation and our implementation. So what's one thing that if someone who they think I can't be organized, I'm not that way, I was not raised that way, but it stresses me out. I feel like I can't have people coming over because my kitchen is always a mess and I always have that pile that you were talking about. What is just one thing that they could take away from today that they could do to start them on that path to getting organized and staying that way? Okay. 
I would say um, people have a favorite TV show that they watch every week. And I would say take 10 minutes beforehand and say, what could I put away for 10 minutes and then I get to sit down and relax. It's leveraging work before play. And we're only talking 10 minutes of work. <laughs> it also works to leverage it before a meal and say, what, what could I do for 10 minutes to clean up from the morning, whether you're at home or whether you're at work? What could I do 10 minutes before dinner and 10 minutes before TV show in the evening? That is just the 10 minute rule will help you tremendously. You can also, I'm going to give you another one, you can also pray. I remember when I was in that stage of feeling overwhelmed, the whole house, the, the kids, the everything, I went back to bed at 10 a.m. in the morning, and I just laid there. I'm like, God, I am so exhausted. Please help my kindergartner not to get in trouble running around in the neighborhood. Help the four-year-old to do well at preschool. Help the six-month-old to sleep through the night. And I said, and P.S., help me get organized. And I think God just went, finally, she prayed the prayer I've been asking, wanting her to pray. And I believe at that moment, God said, yes, I will not only help Marcia get organized, I'm going to make her a messenger because people need freedom because our things are owning us. And uh, people need freedom from that and they need to have the freedom to work in their gifts. Love those suggestions because they are so practical. And I think you would agree, Marcia, that if you take those 10 minutes before the TV show or the 10 minutes before dinner, or the 10 minutes before picking your preschooler up, the success that you have in those 10 minutes will fuel your motivation to do the next 10 minutes before the next show. Yes. And the success builds on the success, but the clutter builds on clutter. Yes. So it's all a matter of being intentional with how we're spending our time, correct? Exactly. And I was leaning in that direction that organizing our quote space, that's everything around you, your surroundings, what you own. The next level up is owning your time. And this is my favorite puzzle piece to work with people. They start with their or with time being how you put together your day makes all the difference. And I have right now the organize your day system. It's a blueprint. And if you spend a 10 minutes in a morning power bump, uh, planning it out, usually in a planner uh, on your computer, our phones are great for appointments, but that doesn't plan your day. That's only appointments. And then a 10 minute evening wind down where you reflect on the day, you read something positive, you write down, two smiley faces of what was good that day and what one that you want to improve on. When you get control of what I call the bookends of your day, the morning and the evening, you can, the rest of the day, you can be reactive, but you need to be proactive in the morning, planning out your day, proactive during the day, and proactive uh, reflecting on the day and planning the next day. It's, it's hard to work with someone that says, everyone else is interrupting me. That's reactive. But proactive, you just get up maybe a half hour sooner, get the things done you want to, and then the day watersheds and you're fine because you got the important things done. No one can do finances at 10 o'clock at night. It has to be get up and do them in the morning and that will make it so much easier. So organize space, organize your time, and then you look at your life and believe it or not, after I work with people on those two, they start losing weight because they go, I can look at myself. I feel better about myself. I have time to exercise. I feel like eating healthy. I don't have to sit here and grab the first bag of chips that is sitting there. And people really excel and then they graduate from me. And I say, you are equipped to handle the next phase of life. And I tell them, I don't know what God has for you, but it's something special because we have a prayer team that prays on Sunday night, six years now for a half hour, that God will bring the people that he wants to work in their lives and the course people that he wants to learn. And from there, it's amazing the transformation. And they go, I thought I was just going to clean up my stuff. You've given me a life. I'm so excited. I'm not old anymore. I feel young and I'm 
back on track and moving ahead. It's exciting. What a great testimony of the benefits of getting organized and staying that way. Now, as we wrap up this episode, if a listener is struggling with a chaotic, disorganized life, what hope-filled perspective would you want to leave them with today? You don't have to continue that way. There are so many resources. You can go to my website, organizingpro.com. You can look on Instagram. You can look on Pinterest. You can look everywhere. But I also find when women come to me or men, they say, I've been praying about this. And I ask them, do you have a friend that's organized? Yes, she offered to help me, but I didn't take her help. I said, you know, God sent that person in your sphere of influence to help you, but you weren't willing to accept the help. So the hope-filled exercise is pray about it. Whoever God sends, swallow your pride and say, thank you. I would just love for you to come. And if they can't help you, please come to organizingpro.com. And we are very grace-filled. And I haven't seen anyone we haven't been able to change because if they want to, they can and they can learn. So the hope-filled perspective is, I did it. You can do it. Hundreds of people have. And we want to help you. And God is there to help you. And he doesn't want to live you to live a stuck life. Such good wisdom. You know, it makes me realize that in scripture, the Lord says, be still and know. But for me, I, I've told countless numbers of people that when my surroundings are chaotic, my heart can't be at peace and I can't be still. And if we would just take some of the wisdom that you shared today, Marsha, I think then our environment would not be so chaotic and disorganized and it would be easier to be still and know that he is God. Friends, I want to leave you with Proverbs 14.1 that says a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Would you take the advice that Marsha has given us today, be a wise woman as you're building your home, care for it, keep it organized. That will help you in your personal relationships. It will help you in your spiritual walk with the Lord. It will help minimize the stress that you feel by looking at the clutter. And then let Marsha and I know how this episode has encouraged you to get organized and stay that way. And if you know a friend who's really struggling, maybe they're struggling and just feeling stressed out because their home is disorganized, consider sharing this episode with them so that they can benefit from the wisdom that Marsha has shared here. And remember, we will put all of her resources, including her upcoming class in our show notes that you can find at drmichelleb.com. Be looking out in a few weeks because we will have another episode with Marsha when we talk about how to simplify our lives for the holidays. I need that. So I'm sure others will benefit as well. Marsha, thank you for sharing your expertise and wisdom. I look forward to chatting with you again. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Friends, I've been your host, Dr. Michelle Bankson, talking today with organizing pro Marsha Ramsland. Until we meet again, may you have a hope-filled week. <laughs>